Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, good to see everyone here in the chat. Super happy to have you in class. Um, wow, okay, so a lot of familiar faces and it's been so long since I've got to talk to everybody. Um, so you might have noticed the title of today's lesson is Introduction to English for Academic Purposes. Um, now I recognize some of you. Uh, looks like Rose is here, of course, and Bubba is here. I forget if you wanted me to use your name, your actual name, or your screen name. Either way, good to have you. Um, Marcella is here, hello. And uh, we have another returning guest, uh, Akram. Akram, hello, how are you? Doctor. Um, and Rahif is here, hello, welcome. So, been a while since I've got to see everybody, and there's lots of, uh, oh, did it say stream ending? Is that, let me go back to it really quick. Oh my gosh, that's my mistake, I did that. It wasn't ending, it was beginning. Um, it'll end later on. <laughs> Good catch though, see, your reading skills are amazing. Okay, so we're streaming live right now, of course, everybody's in the chat. Um, the reason that it says introduction to EAP is it's a brand new year. It's the first class of uh, 2017, um, January 2017. I hope everybody had a good break if you were attending university. Some of our students I know attend university even in English speaking countries. Um, and we're all here for different reasons um, with the shared interest of learning English. Skilled academic level English. So there's a lot of questions in the chat. The chat is blowing up. Um, super good questions too. And I will try to get to all of them. But I would like to tell you that today's class is an abbreviated class because due to uh, popular demand and requests from students, we listen to you guys and try to give you um, what you're requesting. We have a new lineup for our classes, a new schedule and um, a new teacher as well. Uh, so there's some changes, and I know change is always a little bit scary, but this is uh, what has been requested, and it's the best interest of our students all over the world. So, um, all right, so you, you don't wanna go with Bubba, you wanna go with your actual name, of course. Um, Nariman, hello. Am I saying that right? It's been a while since I've said your name, I hope so. Um, Mona is here. Hi, how are you, Mona? Good to have you. And uh, Shivan, hello. Yes, good to have you here as well. Um, and Julian, is Julian here as well? Hey, Julian, what's up? Sorry that it said stream ending. That was my bad. Um, wow, it is going super, super fast here, all the questions. I want to make sure I answer all of them. Um, Rosa, don't worry about your homework, that's okay. Uh, send it when you can and I will um, make the corrections for you. So we have some new students. We have some students that just joined later on in our class. This is English for academic purposes and we have gone over a lot of different things. You can go back in our YouTube series, in our, in our YouTube channel and see previous classes We've talked about um, writing strategies, reading strategies. We've gone over academic vocabulary. We have uh, spent a long time on essay creation and APA formatting, all of which are very um, useful subjects if you are planning on going to university or if you want to apply for a high-level job that requires English proficiency or even higher than proficiency, English excellence really is what we're after. Um, okay, Mansoor is here, and nice. We got a lot of, lot of students in class today. Um, 44 students right now, actually. That's awesome, very cool. Um, Kinette, or Sinet, you're from France. Hello, happy to have you here. Um, Akram, you said, will I please tell you the new schedule? Yes, of course. Um, I will talk about that right now. Bruno from Brazil. Hi, what's up? Okay, so I'm going to take a little break from the chat, but I will try to go back and answer all your questions. Um, this is English for Academic Purposes, which is just one of several Smart Live classes we have. Um, I'm going to zoom in here for you. Hello from Ukraine. Hi, nice to have you. UAE, what's up? Morocco's here. Um, 
Nice, 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 nice. So here's the lineup. I'm gonna go over the schedule and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the classes are going to be like, when they are going to be. Um, I have my laptop over on the side here that I'm going to bring up the schedule on so that I get everybody's times exactly correct. Um, so we do have some students that aren't really familiar with Smart Live classes and what they offer. Um, Smart Live classes, they're English, only classes where we uh, teachers from America and Canada help students to perfect their English skills for a variety of purposes. Now we have entry level classes um, for uh, beginners and intermediate students that are good starts to sort of um, improve your English to the ability level where you could join this class and prepare yourself for um, higher education university classes, academic classes, or maybe you're, you're applying for a job that requires English. Um, they are uh, streamed on a regular basis, and the price uh, is $35 per month Canadian. Um, because all, all the, it's a company that's based in Canada, even though some of your teachers are American, and you get the American accent and spelling. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a better deal too in, in Canadian dollars. The Canadian dollar is, uh, is not quite as strong right now as the American dollar, so you save a little bit of money that way. Uh, it's $35 a month, but you get a month free. So if you're not a premium subscriber, you can sign up and try it out for a month, see how it is, um, and it's completely free, which is awesome. And then it's just $35 Canadian after that. Um, and here are the options for classes that you can join. Our pre-intermediate English um, is with Abby, and uh, sometimes Nicole will jump in there too if, uh, if Abby's sick or, or something like that. It's on, uh, it's Tuesday mornings, uh, mornings here in America at least, um, or Vancouver, Canada, our neighbors to the north, and that's 1530 GMT. Um, right here, what we would refer to as 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so, a little bit about Abby, it says right here, she's a native of Olympia, which is the um, capital of Washington State. A lot of people think it's Seattle, it's not. It's Olympia, and she moved to Spokane, she attended college, and she had a basketball and track and field scholarship. Um, and then she completed a degree in sociology, philosophy, and she has an education background um, and has taught here in America and overseas as well. She's a great teacher. Um, she uh, made Spokane her permanent home. She also enjoys lots of craft projects and things like that. She's an amazing educator, amazing teacher, and a fun personality too. If you haven't checked out her class, check it out. You can have a class with Sean as well. Sean is the academic director at Canadian College of English Language in uh, Canada, Vancouver, Canada. I am the director uh, here at Spokane College of English Language in the US. Um, so Sean and I are kind of counterparts. Um, Sean has been an instructor at CCEL since 2007. He's currently the academic director. As a teacher of the years, he's taught a variety of levels. So he's taught everything from beginner to English for academic purposes, advanced level English. Um, and he oversees curricula development. So they build a lot of these classes in Canada. We build some here in the US as well. Um, everybody collaborates to give you the best English curricula that um, brilliant minds can come up with. Uh, we also have Neil, he's the upper intermediate English teacher. Um, he teaches here at Spokane College of English Language, and he's been teaching since 2011 here at the school. He has taught at other colleges and universities as well. Very skilled teacher. Um, if you have questions about APA, uh, Neil's a go-to guy. He's amazing at that. We also have this goofy looking guy right here. Um, I teach English for academic purposes. So I'm the director at Spokane College of English Language here in Spokane, Washington, USA. Um, I have taught every level um, that we offer here. I've taught the very beginner, beginner level. I've taught intermediate and advanced levels as well. Um, I like to discuss grammar. 
I love teaching grammar. It's a fun thing for me to teach, um, and it's really interesting. I love academic vocabulary, um, teaching writing and reading strategies. Uh, we've talked a little bit about them here in this class, and it's, it's a real joy for me. I love getting to meet all of you wonderful students and um, correct homework and everything else, which if you have questions about what that looks like, you can ask um, the always lovely Rosa, who attends all of our classes, what that's like. She could probably give you a little bit of insight there. Um, but basically, if you sign up to be a premium subscriber, you will get corrected homework, video chats, one-on-one -on -one question time, um, and you can also take placement tests. You can also get a certificate when you are done for um, Smart Live classes. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, <laughs> I need some water. Heyo asks, uh, is the Canadian dollar cheaper than the American dollar? Yeah, it's uh, between 70 and 80 cents right now. It kind of goes back and forth to the American dollar. So you do save a little bit of money that way. Um, and we have Ecuador, Morocco, uh, tons of students right now, it's so awesome. So, <laughs> um, Rosa, why do you say you hate Sean? That's, Sean's awesome, Sean's a great guy. Um, we have France here, Ukraine. Uh, Amir, it's your first time watching the class. Perfect, you're starting at a very good time. So let me, uh, let me go back to the big screen here and I will, I will kind of go over what we plan to do. Um, we're gonna have uh, one class a week, so this class is going to shift times a little bit. Um, this class is going to be on Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, that is uh, 15.30 GMT, and I'm gonna go ahead and type that in the chat for you. Um, on Thursdays. And then I'll give you a little preview of some of the curricula that we are going to go over. Um, Nadia is here as well. Hello, Riem from Morocco. Hi, good to have you. Um, we have a German student as well. Hello, happy to have you. Okay, um, you're gonna study in Montreal. Yeah, of course, Smart English can definitely help you improve your English. Um, this is amazing curricula, it really is. I truly um, believe in it and its efficacy. It works really, really well. Um, there's so much scaffolding within the levels. Um, it also is updated continually. Um, I remember I was teaching a class one time and we have so many experts that are building this and working on this every single day that there's really nothing else out there like it. It's amazing how up to date and advanced this is. Um, a student pointed out in the chat actually that a vocabulary word had been duplicated. Um, a simple mistake, it could happen to anyone with any curricula. In fact, I used to circle these mistakes in my own textbooks that I would get from my university and uh, you know, shown to my teachers and be like, hey, I found an error. Um, and I always felt really proud for doing that. Uh, but they couldn't fix it. It was a book, it was printed, it was final. Um, so it always kind of bothered me. I'm like, well, this is a mistake that just exists in all of these books. We need to fix this. Um, so a student pointed out in the chat, hey, there's a word that's duplicated. I was teaching, so I couldn't do anything at the time, but I emailed one of our developers um, and I just said, hey, this word's repeated. I refreshed the page five minutes later and it was fixed. It was, it was repaired, it was perfect then. There were no um, errors after that point and it made me feel really good. I was like, this is what English should be. This is what education should be. We should, if we find problems, fix them immediately so that perfect English learning is available to us right there in the moment. Um, so uh, that's a little bit about the curricula, my own uh, love of the SMART curricula. So um, Charlie's from Ecuador, which he says is the center of the earth. 
Um, is that because it's so hot in Ecuador? Um, yep, and you're right, it is cheaper than the euro. The Canadian dollar and American dollar are getting pretty close to about the same, but the euro is much, much higher. Um, okay, and it looks like we have a student from Armenia. Hello, we have a few students from Armenia, actually. Um, Saudi Arabian student and uh, Sona is saying it's a super international class. Yeah, that's what's so cool about this. We have students from all over the world. Um, we have Victor from Ukraine and Bruno asks, uh, the teacher that specializes in the TOEFL exam. Well, to answer you simply, all of our teachers uh, specialize in the TOEFL exam. I have taught TOEFL classes. Abby has taught TOEFL classes. Neil has taught TOEFL classes. I believe Sean has also taught TOEFL. Um, he at least is very knowledgeable about um, TOEFL placement tests and other placement tests. He's a brilliant man. Um, oh, Iselia from Belize. Nice. My aunt lives in Belize. She lives in, uh, well, on a small island off the coast of Belize, Ambergris Key. Uh, which I've been to many times. Beautiful place. Belize is gorgeous. Um, we have Brazil as well. Philippines. Uh, Istanbul. Okay, so Dar uh, Darren or Derry. Diary? Diary? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name exactly. Um, asks, what is the new level? This is not a new level. This is the same level we've been teaching if you've showed up to the class before, so no worries. We're going to continue English for academic purposes. As I said, this is just an introductory class though. Um, I'm going to just sort of talk about what this class is and then we're actually gonna start studying um, heavily on Thursday and then it's going to be every Thursday from there forward. Um, Karen asks about IELTS. IELTS and TOEFL, we'll talk about both of them a little bit. Um, this is not specifically an IELTS class or a TOEFL class, but many of the academic vocabulary words that we study, you will find on the IELTS test or the TOEFL test. This is academic purposes, so all of this language that we use, um, that we read, that we uh, write in, is going to be similar to the vocabulary used on TOEFL and IELTS. Um, there's differences between the tests themselves, and if I were teaching a class to prepare for IELTS or TOEFL, I would teach them a little bit differently to gear towards whichever test we were focused on. But I can talk about general test taking strategy that will apply to both. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. We have a student from Iraq. Um, oh. Akram says uh, one euro is a dollar four US, really? That would be very surprising to me. Um, I thought it was a lot more than that. Sharif from Israel, hello, how are you? Good to have you. Um, <laughs> Charlie asks, Josh, do you speak in the natural way or like a teacher? I think I know what you mean. Um, I'm speaking very naturally right now. Uh, it's usually only if I talk to a low-level class that I speak like a teacher. I think what you mean is slow pronunciation and um, articulation of the words. For example, I might t talk like this, I might speak like this if I were teaching a lower-level class. See how I slow down? Um, I uh, pronounce the words very carefully. Uh, very slowly, but this class is English for academic purposes, and although we're talking about academic English, I like to speak in a natural pace, like I would my friends, my family. I talk to you students in this class exactly like I talk to my friends, my colleagues, uh, my parents, my brother, um, and that's very purposeful. The reason that I am talking at a natural rate of speech and also in a pretty casual manner, even though our subject matter is academic, is I want you to become familiar with the natural rate of speech. If you go to study at an academic university that um, is, is in English, so you go to study in Australia, America, um, UK, Canada, 
then you will need to be able to understand English at this rate of speech, how quickly I'm speaking right now. So I do that to prepare you for professors, lecturers um, that you will have to listen to, take notes, and, and take tests from. So I'm very careful to not slow my rate of speech in this class unless you ask me. And I do encourage you to ask me to repeat, to slow down my rate of speech if it's too quick, um, because that's how we learn. Like here is the comfortable place for you to be able to ask me to slow down, to, um, to talk um, less uh, rapidly, <laughs> or to repeat if you, if you want me to repeat something. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Charlie. Thursday at the same time, you can't make it, Alejandra. Um, the same time as what? Maybe you work, maybe you go to school. It's not gonna be at this time. It's going to be earlier um, than now. It's going to be at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 15.30 GMT. Um, okay, you're from Tunisia, that's your first time here. Well, Hamza, welcome. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Very funny. So the, the Euro market crashed, huh? Uh, that's too bad. Um, <laughs> Ryam or Riam says, it's a good idea ever. Um, ever is a, uh, it's sort of a, it's a superlative word, ever, meaning of all time, right? So we would use the superlative adjective for, be for good, which is best you would say it's the best idea ever if you're using good, effective, accurate English. Um, you are asking where I'm from. I'm from right here in Spokane, Washington, USA. I'll show you a map on the screen in a second. I do have a North American accent, yes. Um, and something that you guys should know that's very good for you. Um, just bringing up Google Maps here so I can show you exactly where I'm from. Um, it has been said in research that people who live in North America in the Pacific Northwest of the United States have the most neutral American English accent of all of America. So basically if you go to uh, New York or Texas or Boston, um, East Coast, the South, Mississippi, um, Arkansas, people have very thick accents. And when I say thick accent, I mean, for even Americans, it's sometimes difficult to understand. Well, here in the Pacific Northwest, the upper left of the United States, um, which I'm going to show you in the background right now. Um, this is Spokane, Washington. Actually, I'll show you our college. Um, so here, is the beautiful building I am in right now. This is the inside. Um, that's our building. So I'm like right here. <laughs> uh, beautiful city, beautiful downtown. There's our logo. You can see, I think, Spokane College of English Language. Here's our building. There's a great juice place downstairs. Um, here's our offices and some students playing ping pong. Um, so we're in Spokane, Washington, which if I zoom out, there's Washington State. We're on the West Coast and we're in the Northwest. We call this the Pacific Northwest. Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. And to zoom out even further, if that doesn't look familiar yet, here's Mexico, Canada, Alaska up here, United States. And then, of course, Central America, South America, there's Brazil. So we're right here in the world. Um, so that is where I am from. And we do, we have the most neutral accent. So it's a very, um, it's a very good accent to learn if you plan on traveling anywhere in the United States. If you go down to Texas, people talk they speak in a different way um, that sometimes is hard for even Americans to understand. 
and I'm terrible at accents, but you're asking if I can imitate a draw. Well, yeah, certainly I can try to mimic a draw that you might hear in Texas. I'm not very good at accents, but I can try my best for you if you like. Um, <laughs> I, it's, that's not, not a great accent, but you can watch movies or television and get an idea for um, how people might uh, speak if they're from Texas. And <laughs> if you go to the East Coast, like I said, Boston, people have a thick accent as well. They'll say, uh, Ah, let's uh, let's get in the car. Let's go out. Let's get go to the bar. Go to the car. I lost my car keys. I can't find my car keys. Um, again, terrible accent. I'm not an actor. I'm very bad at accents, but I like to try to do them because they're fun. Um, New York. They kind of draw out their sounds too. New York. I'm from New York. Go get a hot dog. Get out of here. Um, it's it's pretty bad. I'm I'm terrible, but. Uh, my point is, here in this class, if you learn to speak English, if you mimic my accent, and then you travel anywhere in the United States, um, people should be able to, to understand you. So, <laughs> uh, ah, Aaron, good one, yeah. Howdy, how are you today? Howdy. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of like a cartoon cowboy or something, I don't know. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today. I, I, I know you guys are going to be um, sad that class is ending a little bit early. But again, this is just an introduction. It's just to remind you guys what times the new classes are going to be, which I'm going to go over those right now for you. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to keep the accent. Uh, it's very silly. It's very, very silly. Um, Michigan, Colorado, people say... Um, instead of you are welcome, uh-huh. That, you know, um, and I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I believe you're from Ukraine. Uh, your name is written in Ukrainian, and I can't speak Ukrainian or read Ukrainian, so I can't pronounce your name correctly. I'm sorry. But to answer your question, people would say that in most of uh, the United States and Canada. We say, uh-huh, and it does mean yes or I agree. Um, if I say you're welcome sometimes to a friend, sure, they might say, uh-huh. It means like, yeah, you're welcome. It, in some places, it might even be considered a little bit rude unless it's your friend. Um, for example, if I hold the door for you and someone's like, uh-huh, it's intonation, tonality of your voice. You can, you can discern a lot from language that is partnered with actual spoken language. Body language, for example, if I, if I have my arms crossed, it's less receptive. Um, if, I, if I have an open posture, it's more receptive. I'm engaged with you. I want to speak with you, things like that. Also the tone of our voice, the inflection that we use, all of that combines to create meaning. So yes, that's true, but I would say it's case by case. What's the situation? What is the context? Is this a friend you're speaking to? Is it a stranger? Um, you're going to speak differently depending on um, um, whom your audience is. That, that really changes how we speak. If I'm speaking to um, someone of authority, you know, a police officer, a teacher, a parent, I will speak differently than if I'm joking around with my friends. That's how language works, and you can probably identify with that. Um, do you speak the same way uh, to your parents as you speak to your friends? Probably not. Same with English. Um, okay. Oh, okay, so Karen has a good point. She says, uh, you can understand everything that I'm saying, but you have a hard time expressing yourself. Um, you can probably think quickly, but to actually articulate it in English takes a little bit of time, right? There's a process that goes on in our minds to um, translate our thoughts and our um, intent, what we want to say, to our actual spoken language. Uh, that's totally normal and totally natural. Uh, this class 
what we try to do um, is develop our language to the point where you're dreaming in English, you're thinking in English, you're um, the time lapse between thought to speech is reduced. So that's part of the goal here. And if you keep coming to class, uh, my guess is that that will um, speed up your um, your process there, Karen. So that's part of our goal. Uh, great observation, though. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I like to discuss that aspect of language learning. All right. Uh, Yusuf, hello. Hi, Alejandra from Chile. Hello. Um, okay. You're interested in the schedule and you don't know exactly what the difference is with your country. Okay, well again, I'm gonna type the schedule in the chat, but to let you know all the times, I'm gonna give them to you right now. So, Abby's class is uh, English 115. You can see right here. Um, it's a pre-intermediate English and uh, she will go over I'll give you a little preview here. Go to the library. And if you're a premium subscriber, you get access to all these awesome lessons. Uh, so English 115 here, that is an intermediate level English. It's an awesome class if you're beginning. Um, if I'm speaking too quickly and you want a more uh, fundamental foundation of English before you, you subscribe to this class, then here's where you might start. Uh, she goes over grammar, present continuous, present simple, introductory stuff, um, negatives, questions. So this is what students get access to, um, this and all of our exercises, if you join Abby's class. And there's great exercises and presentations. So here's some exercises you would have access to and can do. Um, you can also go through the presentations after class so you can kind of review what your teacher um, went over. It's great. So you'll get access to all of that if you sign up. Um, that is, again, Abby's pre-intermediate class. And that is Tuesdays. Um, and that's funny. I tried to copy and paste the time and it made a little um, emoji instead. <laughs> so Tuesdays, and that's GMT, uh, 1530 GMT. So Sean, he is intermediate English. So he is teaching our um, 125, or excuse me, 120 class, which is intermediate English. I'm gonna paste Sean's time right there, and then I'll show you just a little preview of what Sean will teach. Um, Sean is going over the English 120. I love this class. Again, lots of good fundamental stuff. Uh, questions, have and have got, present simple and continuous, state and dynamic verbs, present passive. So again, you'll get access to a ton of great cu curricula that um, Sean will go over with you. And then also all of the exercises, presentations, tons of resources there. Um, the best city in America for studying, <laughs> Ray asks. Uh, this is gonna sound a little biased because I'm here and I work here and I, I live here, but Spokane, honestly, Spokane is a beautiful city for studying English. We have a huge majority of native speakers. We're like 91% native speakers, but we still have a great culture in Spokane. There's Thai restaurants, Indian restaurants, Chinese food restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Brazilian, Ethiopian. Um, we have an Armenian restaurant. We have a Greek restaurant. There's tons of culture, food, um, that anyone from any city in the world would enjoy. Um, it's also very, very affordable. It is so cheap to live here in Spokane. So um, even though you know students are like, well, the American dollar and the Canadian dollar, you save a little bit of money, or you know, it might be cheaper to live in Australia, um, maybe for tuition a little bit, but uh, you can get a nice meal at a hundred different restaurants that are within walking distance of the college for like $4. Um, it's super, super cheap to live here. I love it for that reason. Uh, rent, if you're renting an apartment all by yourself, you can get a private, nice, 
studio apartment in a very beautiful part of downtown Spokane called Brown's Edition for um, about $350 or $400 a month, which is amazing. I mean, if you go try to live in Seattle, you're gonna spend about $1,200 for the very cheapest apartment outside the city. Um, here in Spokane, it's, it's super, super affordable. So, and it's just beautiful. We have a river that runs right through the middle of the city with big waterfalls. It's, it's a gorgeous city to live in. Um, so check it out. Uh, Massachusetts does have a strange accent. Boston, of course. Um, I'm trying to answer everybody's questions, so let me just take a look at the chat. Um, okay. Is the word telly British word or no? Yes, that's a British word for television. We say TV mostly. Um, that's a British word for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh yeah, Charlie says America isn't a country. I know, we, we call it a country here in America. America, I live in America. Um, really, I should say the United States um, because if you're in Mexico, you're American. If you're in Chile, you're American. There's North America and South America and Central America. But really it's all the Americas, right? It's just habit. In America, in the United States, we just say America. Um, okay, lesson about slang words, Sona asks. Yeah, I would love to teach a lesson about slang words. And what I'll probably do, because again, this is English for academic purposes, is I will teach you academic vocabulary and then um, I will teach you the slang versions of those words. That way we're still learning English for academic purposes, but you're learning fun slang probably as well. So we will do that. Um, okay. Ah, Pedro, come on. <laughs> I, I do speak a little Spanish, but this is an English class. So I'm only gonna speak English in this class. Uh, you can chat with me outside of class and, and I can speak Spanish with you, but English only in here, okay? Um, back to uh, the preview of the lesson though. So this was Sean's class. We also have Neil who does upper intermediate English. So he teaches the English 125 and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I taught this class for eight quarters in a row um, in my own teaching history. I love this class. It's so fundamental. If you feel like you're not perfect in grammar, um, this is the class to take. The grammar in this class covers basically all of the grammar that you're gonna need in English. Um, it reviews what you learn earlier on and it prepares you for everything after. So if you still feel like you struggle in basic vocabulary and grammar, pre-academic English, um, so I suggest to take this class. Um, I suggest students take this class. It's, it's great. It's, there's so much information in it. And you can have access to it if you become a premium subscriber. Um, and then of course my class, this one, English for Academic Purposes. So, um, mm, that answers the question about slang. Uh, Rife, it's your first time here. And uh, you talk about New York. Yeah, New York. Oh, man, huge city. Amazing city. Expensive city. Uh, New York is great. I would never want to live in New York. It's so crazy expensive. Um, but there's a lot there. There's a lot going on. Okay, uh, Sarah, good luck on your test tomorrow. Thank you for uh, um, stopping by. I'm going to let you guys go for now. But please, come back um, Thursday at 1530 GMT. I will be here. It's a new time, new place. I'm so excited. Um, I guess not a new place, same place, but a new time. And uh, we're going to go over a ton of great information. So again, so good to see everybody. I missed you guys. We had a, a week break there uh, for winter break. And um, now we're back. And we've listened to you. We've listened to your requests. We're, we're shifting to a new time that the majority of students uh, said it would work better for. And I really look forward to our full class coming up on Thursday. So um, I'll see you guys then. And okay, one last uh, question I'll answer here. Um, 
there's the, the time for our class in the chat. And Laura says, what is the difference between fast and quick? When do we use each word and advice for remembering that? Um, fast is a more casual uh, adjective that we use in English to describe um, uh, travel. So I'm traveling very fast in my car. I'm driving too fast in my car. Um, quick, ooh, they're very close. Um, quick is usually to describe the entire action. So I'm going to make dinner real quick. Uh, that would be something casually we would say. Um, I wouldn't say I'm going to make dinner fast. Um, oh, you know what? That's a great question. Fast and quick. Let me, um, let me think on that for a second while I'm answering these other questions in the chat. And then I can give you, I don't know, a couple example sentences. Let me think about one or two that I can say. And I'm going to try to make sure I answer everybody's questions. We have so many students today. It's awesome. Um, tell me, what is your name? My name is Joshua, Joshua Porter. Um, and Charlie, okay, from Ecuador. You are welcome, Charlie. All right. Um, so I'm scrolling back through some of the questions here. Uh, why do people call New York a Big Apple? The Big Apple? I don't know, actually. It's a slang uh, term for New York. It's a nickname, we would say, for the city. Um, I'm sure we could look it up if we wanted to. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. OK, I'm searching for you to find out. Um, we do teach essays. Yes, we do teach essays. Um, just the timeline changed, Aaron. Uh, nothing else changed. Oh, OK, Zaid asks, we're still on quick and quickly. I'm still thinking of example sentences. But to answer that, quickly is the adverb, and quick is the adjective. With fast, it's the same. The adverb and the adjective um, are both the word fast. Um, but quick does not have an adverb um, that is the same. We add the ly. So quickly is the adverb to answer that question. Um, and, oh, Tunisia. Rafiq, hello from Tunisia. Uh, good to see you. Happy to have you here. So I mean, that, that's one difference between fast and quick. Um, I'm trying to think of example sentences. Um, so they both mean a swift or rapid process. They both mean um, movement that is not slow. Um, you can use them as synonyms often. You can say the runner is quick, the runner is fast. Um, both of those work. I would say that for most purposes, they're interchangeable. You can use them the same way. I'm trying to think of example sentences um, that may be different. Uh, I drove fast. I cannot say I drove quick. I would have to change it to the adverb. I drove quickly um, because that's adverbial usage of fast and quick. I, that's all I really have for now. That's the best answer I can give you um, off the top of my head. But I could look it up and do a little research and help you um, a little further. Or if you're a premium subscriber, we could do a hangout and I can talk about it. Uh, I will teach you English for academic purposes. We do have lessons that include things like mechanics, um, comma usage, semicolon. They're mainly in our writing classes. Um, OK, so the class goes for, um, well, an extended time. Um, we have. Um, a placement test you can take that will help you assess your English abilities. Um, it gives you English level. I'll show you what that looks like, and then I'll send you a link to it. Um, oops. Sorry, we're not ending just yet. Here is the link to um, this test. This is our excuse me, English level test. Um, and I'm going to paste this in the chat for you. Oop. There you go. So you can take that. 
Uh, Aaron says it's your first class of the year. Awesome. Well, I'm glad it's with me, Aaron. Thanks for showing up. Uh, okay, Mona is saying it is 2.17 midnight in Iraq. I think you mean 2.17 a.m. Um, is what we would say, in English at least. Uh, Alex from Guatemala, hey, good to have you. I'm happy to see everybody here. And I do have to go. Um, I think I went over everybody's schedule and time and pasted those in there for you. Uh, so again, Neil is on Mondays at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard or 15.30 um, GMT. Uh, then we have on Tuesdays, same time, uh, 7.30, we have Abby. And then Thursdays is me, 7.30 or 15.30 GMT. And then on Fridays, we have um, Sean, and he is at 9 o'clock or 17 GMT. So um, those are the times. I hope to see everybody there. Uh, again, if you have questions, you can always email Zach, Zach at smartenglish.com. I will put that in the chat. He can answer any of your questions, or you can email me, joshua.live, joshua, <laughs> smartenglish.com. Okay, so please send me an email if you have questions, send Zach an email, let us know, and show up on Thursday for class, okay? Uh, thanks again so much for joining us. This wasn't really how class is gonna go. We're gonna go over lessons. This was just an introduction. So um, come back on Thursday, and we'll start our first lesson of 2017. Thanks so much for being here, everybody, and I will see you guys soon, okay?